We pulled up to an abandoned cottage that had been vandalized and forgotten about for years. And outside were three hooded men standing around a barrel. Accused of killing her driver after he picked her up at a Walmart. If she's Marski Avocado here with that story. Good morning, Mara. George, good morning. This is a truly shocking crime. The last Prosecutor moments caught on surveillance footage, getting into what appears to be her Uber, but it's a stranger. I've gotten Ubers plenty of times before, but this one experience I had a few years ago was the creepiest and weirdest of my life. It was a Saturday night, and I had been out bar hopping with my friends. It was around 1.30 a.m. when my friends and I decided to call it a night. I said goodbye to my friends as they walked to the bus stop. I live in the opposite direction, so I started walking to a spot where my brother was going to pick me up. But as I pulled my phone out, I had received a text message from my brother telling me that he can't pick me up as he had been called in to work. He works nights. I opened up an Uber, and there was this one guy about two minutes away, so I clicked for him to pick me up. His name was Jim, and in his picture, he was a balding, middle-aged man with a mustache and some stubbled facial hair. An old car pulled up beside me. Jim looked out the window and confirmed that he was my Uber ride. Once I got inside, I noticed there was another person in the passenger seat. I said, oh, hi. They didn't reply to me. I asked Jim how his night was going. He didn't reply either. I was too drunk and too tired to care. Destination to my house was already on the app before I made the call for the Uber, so Jim started driving. I was scrolling through my phone and texting friends, and I started to hear Jim whisper and mumble to himself. I couldn't understand what he was saying, and if he was talking to me or the person next to him, but I ignored it. As we were driving, he started to become more on edge and the things he was whispering to himself was becoming more coherent. One thing I heard Jim say in a loud whisper was, you do it. I can't risk going back to jail. Even though I was drunk, that was enough for me to stop playing around on my phone and focus on my surroundings and keep a closer eye on Jim and the person next to him. The person hadn't said a word the whole time I was in the car, which I found weird. I looked around outside and we were on the freeway, which wasn't unusual as you had to take to get to my house. The next thing that happened is Jim pulled the car over to rest stop. He once again started talking to himself. Jim then said, I won't do it. You can't make me. He then hit the person next to him in the face and he got out the car. He grabbed something from the trunk and walked off into the darkness. I was stunned with what was going on. I asked the person in the passenger seat if they were all right, but once again, they didn't say anything or do anything. I asked again, this time tapping him on the shoulder. Something didn't feel right after grabbing hold of him. It felt cold. I took a closer look at the person, and to my complete shock and horror, the man looked lifeless with a hoodie on and with white and bluish purple type skin. The expression on his face was shocking. It was as if he were frightened to death. I sat back in the seat and couldn't believe what was going on. I could hear something from outside. It sounded like dirt being shoveled. That must have been what Jim was doing, digging some type of ditch or grave. At that point, I got out of the car and ran down the road, hoping to spot another car to pick me up. This was a sobering experience but I was still drunk and tired. I ran down the road, but didn't get very far without being out of breath and needing a throw up. I'm not sure if I'm running around at night after drinking or the horrifying experience. Maybe both, but I felt sick. I turned around to look at Jim's car. I started to fear the worst when I saw the car start. I thought he was about to chase me down, but he didn't. He just started the car and then sped off into the night, never to be seen again. I felt so relieved, but I still kept fearing he would come back. 
I carried on walking down the road until passing the car, and they gave me a lift home. This incident scarred me for life, and I never got an Uber again. My name is Kyle and I'm an Uber driver and have been for around three and a half years. Most of the time I work from early evening to late at night. I've had my fair share of rude, weird and awkward customers, but I never thought I would have my life threatened. I think it was a Thursday night about 10.30 p.m. I get an alert from a guy named Caleb needing a ride to a house that was located in the countryside. I pull up to a guy wearing dark blue jeans, a black hoodie, old white sneakers, and a baseball cap. I roll my window down and ask if he's Caleb. He nodded yes and got in the back of my car. I looked at him in the rear view mirror. He was just looking out the window with his cap down and had both of his hands in his pockets of his hoodie. That was enough for me to know that he was interested in conversation and the destination was already set up as I picked him up, so there was no need to make small talk either. As we were nearing the house, he sat forward and started looking out of the window like he was looking for something or someone in particular. He was looking around the quiet, dark forest area, as was I. I then heard something thud on the floor of my car. Caleb then picked it up, whatever it was, and put it back in his pocket. But I took a look in the rearview mirror and saw that it was a gun. The butt of a handgun was sticking out of his pocket. I look at Caleb to see if he noticed me looking at him, but he was still looking out of the window. My heart started racing and I began to panic. I was thinking like I was about to get killed and needed to think quickly on how I'm going to get out of this situation. We pulled up to an abandoned cottage that had been vandalized and forgotten about for years. And outside were three hooded men standing around a barrel with a fire inside. Before I had a chance to do anything, Caleb leaned forward, pointed the gun in the back of my neck, and grabbed the keys from my car, turning off the engine. At that point, the three men turned toward the car and started slowly approaching. I thought I was about to get robbed, beaten, or even worse, killed. Caleb then said, don't move, as he got out of the car. He approached the three men and started talking. One of the men then handed him something. I don't know what it was. I couldn't make it out. But shortly after that, talking turned into arguing. And it wasn't long before Caleb shot one of the men dead. Before the other two ran off into the dark woods, Caleb then turned to me, pointed a handgun and fired causing the window to shatter. Thankfully, I wasn't hit. Another gunshot went off, coming from the woods. Caleb turned toward the sound of the gunshot and let off two more rounds before running off into the woods himself. I grabbed my phone and ran out of the car into the opposite direction. When I thought I was far enough away, I called the police. As I was running, I could still hear gunshots in the distance. I told the police to go to the address. I still had it on my phone, so I knew exactly where to send them. Two police cars drove by, and one of them stopping for me as I was waving them down. I told them I was the one who called. I was taken back to the station to make a more official statement. I was also informed that the cottage was abandoned and found no one near the property in the woods. The only thing they found was my car and a shattered window. The police told me it was a drug deal gone bad and I should be considered lucky that I wasn't killed. My name is Ed. I'm 25 years old and I'm an Uber driver. The story happened about four months ago. It was late on a Friday night around 11 p.m. and I was doing my pickups around local bars and nightclubs. I had just finished dropping off some passengers when I got a notification from a guy named Jackson 
I pulled up to his location when a man peered through my window asking if I was Ed, his Uber driver. I said, yeah, you Jackson? He replied, yeah, and got in. Once he got in my car, I could see him more clearly. He had long, dirty blonde hair, an unshaven face, and red bags under his eyes. He was wearing jeans and a dark blue hoodie. I started driving toward the destination that he had marked down. It wasn't long before I could smell his foul odor. I took a few glances at him in the rearview mirror. He looked pretty paranoid. He kept looking around outside as if he was searching for someone. The place he was driving to was a bar on the quieter part of the town, in fact. I thought the bar was shut down, but I didn't want to ask and make conversation with this guy as I didn't feel comfortable. He didn't say anything at the start of the journey. He was just looking around as I mentioned before. He kept taking sips of some kind of liquor he had with him. It was when we started to get to the quiet, empty highway when he started talking. He was saying things like, life is precious and always be careful because you could lose someone close to you. I wasn't sure if he was even talking to me. I just assumed he was. He then showed me a picture of a woman and a young girl. He said that was his wife and daughter. I accurately said, you have a nice family. He then asked if I had a daughter. I said yes, but I don't really. I don't know why I said yes, but thank God I did because at that point, Jackson told me to stop the car. As I was stopping the car, he wrapped his arm around my throat and pointed something in the back of my head. It was a gun. He told me to go home to my daughter and be thankful. As he said this, he passed me the photo of his wife and daughter. He then got out of the car and fled into the darkness of the night. I then drove to the police station and reported what had happened. What they told me made the incident 10 times scarier than what it already was. After showing them the photo, the man had handed it to me. The police told me that the man had killed a woman and her daughter hours earlier, and the police were out looking for him. Thinking about this story horrifies me. I think about a lot of things. That I had a sadistic maniac in my car. Now he murdered that woman and child. I also think about how I told him I had a daughter. I honestly think if I hadn't, he would have killed me. He wouldn't be here to tell this story. As far as I know, the police still haven't found Jackson. And he's still out there somewhere.